In this tutorial, for intermediate Blender users, we'll primarily focus on how I created the smoke effects for this rocket ship when I launched it into space. And the animation I've had posted on YouTube for a couple of weeks now, so you can see that in there, what it looks like. But the, that's really the only thing that I've made kind of realistic looking in the scene. And, you, well, you can kind of get a general idea of what the thing does in here. It just takes off, and let me see if I can go into camera view like that. It takes off into space. Let's try that. Actually, let's do that start from the beginning so so obviously the smoke is still baked into the scene and this is a particle system coming out from the bottom of it that's different from the smoke emitter so we won't focus too a lot on that but I'll cover the background details just briefly and then we'll get to the smoke effects because that's really what makes the scene come to life and what makes it uh, the most fun alright so let's move this out of the way well actually let's just close this for the moment and we'll look at some of the details of the background first. First of all, the sky, in case you're not familiar. And you should be familiar, you should be well up to speed with Blender with all of my basic tutorials. Because it's once you're grounded in the basics, then this kind of stuff becomes a lot easier. And I won't be spending a lot of time on the details within the scene. Except for the smoke effects in this one. And then, because uh, I expect you should be able to handle most of that on your own. All the other stuff. So I go into the world button. I haven't covered this in a separate module. So basically I have the blend and the real set for the sky. And then I have set a horizon color for this one down here and a zenith color for up top. So let's look at it up above a little bit. We'll render it up here. And you can see it's the darker color up there. And it's a little bit on the purple side as well. And then down here I have stars set. And what matters here is both the size and uh, the color of the stars like that so and if you know if you look up close you can see there's actually colors purples and yellows blues greens things like that and it really does help uh, bring the scene to life all right so then let's re-render this earlier one down here and then the ground as far as this is concerned uh, it's just a regular plane and I subdivided the surface and it's a little bit of a fractal surface as you've seen in some of my other videos. And the lighting is what helps bring it to life because I'm not using cycles render, we're just using blender render in this case because of the volumetric smoke effects that I wanted to use. But if you notice in here, the it's just a bunch of individual lights and this light back here you see is has a bluish type color so I have blues in the distance just like good art would do and the more orange reddish colors in the foreground that kind of lends that aspect of distance to the scene like that so but when I have a bunch of individually spaced lights like that it kind of helps give a little I don't know what kind of effect you would call it but I don't know it helps bring the scene to life alright All right. so then uh, Again, for the rocket ship, we won't cover it in detail too much, but look at it in wireframe mode. Basically, it's one cylinder within another cylinder like this. And this cylinder up at top was tapered down in pretty good detail so I could get it, get it to the kind of point. I kind of had to guess the way I made it, you know, that it worked for me. And then this one here you look closely in here all this was was it was a cylinder as well except I had gone around to the selective points along the edges where these are tapered in and I just grabbed those particular points and then I scaled them inward to get that effect of the curved effect for the uh, rocket fuel in this shape and the same with this so that really wasn't any big deal so now let's get down to the these little rocket pieces of themselves like this they probably should be further up in the cylinder but you know once you're an artist you can do whatever you want <laughs> that's all right so there's really two pieces to this let me look at it in see there's this outer shell and then this piece is I separated by parts from this piece here and then I cut it down in size in X Y direction and then I moved it upward into the scene and so this orange forms the basis of the particle system that represents, uh, let's see, let's go into camera view, it represents these particles coming out of the bottom of the rocket ship there. All right, so where was I? Let's see. 
All right. So that's from this. So then that should have the particle system on it, which we'll have to select it. I don't have that one yet. It's those guys right there is separate from that object. I didn't want a particle system set on the whole thing because then the particles would come out from the sides, which I didn't want. So I just wanted it to come out from the face of this object in here. If you look down in here, here's the particle system associated with it. It starts at frame 55, so it doesn't start right away. It has a fairly short lifetime, so the flames aren't too long. And then down here, uh, I'm emitting it in the negative Z direction. All right, and remember these are on, these represent local axes. Now, this, since this is not rotated, then the local and global axis are going to look the same like that. Still, well, as far as at least... Well, they're not rotated in this direction for Z is concerned. So Z is, negative Z is downward, and that's why those particles come down from there. And then, let's see if I can get this other guy. Where is the, now there's something else in the seam. Where did it go? Oh, I just lost it. Where are those? Maybe I need to see it. Let's try it in here. See if I can find them. I'm looking for the smoke emitter. And it's just a bunch of individual points. They're hard to see sometimes. Let me see if I can find them. I should be able to see them in here. Let's see. I'm not talking about the flames from the particles. I'm talking about the smoke itself. There they are, rocket smoke. Okay, so basically to create the smoke effect, if, you, if you're not too familiar with mess with the smoke you need a domain cube which is you need two things let's go look over here so under smoke you need the flow and you need the domain all right the flow is the basically where the smoke's coming from and that's what these are these represent here and so really what this was it was a circle and then I just grabbed selective segments of the circle and I cut out those segments and so this is just all one single object called rocket smoke. And then I'd gone in here and I basically pressed, well, you come into smoke and I press the flow button and I left the, I left it at the default values. Nothing more than that. All right. So let's just, let's just kill it and we'll put it back in there. So basically that's all I did. Oh, maybe I did have cranked up the multiplier or something on there. All right. So let's see what the multiplier was on there. Let me see. 1.816. All right, so that's the only thing that I'd really done differently on there. So that's the flow for the smoke, and it's just coming out of these vertices at this point. All right, so then the other thing we need is the domain. And the domain is the cube, or the basically it's a cube that you have to design to for the smoke to flow into. All right, and so you notice it's pretty thin like this and what matters is your view of it at times but uh, if you just put the smoke directly into this cube it's not going to work properly and so I do some tricks to make the smoke flow out because if we run alt a and you see what happens they kind of come out smoke comes out and it swirls let's start it from the beginning it comes out and it swirls around and it does these really cool interesting effects well if you just have this the cube by itself it's not going to do that. It's, it's, there's a, it's not going to get that effect. But if this is the main domain cube that we need in order for the smoke to be in it. And then if you notice the rocket smoke itself is actually within that domain. If I look at it from the front view in ortho mode and I zoom in, it, there it is there. And the domain cube is this piece here. So it's within the domain cube. So the flow has to be within the domain cube itself. So I'll go get that. There's the domain cube, right? And I clicked high resolution, smoke high resolution. And let me see that I didn't do a whole lot more to it. And the reason being is you can go into the Blender site and they have tutorials for creating smoke and creating flames and fire and things like that. All right, so it's already in there. So I think I'd change the high resolution and the and also, but the uh, well, let me see on the flow particles. No, not the flow. Oh no, I didn't want to do that. Oh no, I hope I didn't goof that up. Hang on, Control Z Z. 
Z. Okay, back to the domain. All right. Uh, for the for the domain, it's actually kind of goofy. You would think you would change the the rendering of the smoke by clicking the smoke object, but you don't. You change it by clicking the domain object, which is the cube that we're working with here. And there's a couple things you need to set. And this is also it's also built within the Blender routines. You can find it on their website. So the critical thing is you have your material, and it has to be a volume base material and they specify exactly this must be set to zero and then you're free to adjust the density which I did up here to six like this and did I change anything else no um, you can change your resolution I have it set at 50 on here so you just follow my you know just ch you can just use these exact settings like this but the specific thing was making sure the density was set to zero and then you also need this texture so you create a texture in here and you make it voxel data because it's not voxel data at the beginning all right and then down here you have to specify the domain object which is the smoke domain cube which I put into here and then let me see and the density set to 1.0 emission set to 1.0 these are all basic settings you can find within under blender.org uh, in their tutorials so it's really straightforward but what's not straightforward and what they allude to is that what really affects the power of, of the smoke is the, th the types of things it interacts with because if you just take this smoke by itself and, and we're blasted down into the into this cube then it's just going to bounce straight up and it doesn't look realistic but now the important thing for this lesson is that right here is the surface and surfaces will is, will is what makes you or breaks you with these type of smoke simulations and this is a uh, so really if you look closely what I have is this extruded surface I use the um, proportional editing and I had grabbed subdivided a cube first I grabbed the center point and I pulled it up through the center using the subdivision, I mean using proportional editing to generate this surface that's tapered down like this and curves out and even comes out to the side, curves back up <clears throat> onto itself like that. And that way when the smoke particles come down, they're actually hitting the surface and they're bouncing around, cruising around, and then they actually roll back onto itself. And then that's what gives the effect of the smoke moving out in all directions and swirling because if you just if this was just a flat cube box they would just come down and bounce straight back up and believe me it looks completely terrible and that's why I recommend for many of you to follow my Python tutorials and all of my math lessons because when we do the advanced tutorials really what makes the tutorials advanced is that you have to have a lot more math knowledge because then we generate a lot of our services mathematically we do a lot of things. We generate the placement of objects and particles mathematically using uh, vector calculus and complex numbers, complex analysis, things like that. And that's really what can really make the scene much more powerful than just um, this works. You can work as an artist and pick these. This works pretty good, but it's still not as good as if you were to mathematically generate the surface. That's why this is only an intermediate tutorial and not the advanced tutorials. Okay, so so then. And then the location of that here is with, notice its location here. Let me see if I can run it and show you what's going on here. You see now notice it's above the scene and it has over here, I have collision detection on this piece here. This is a separate object like that, right? So it's colliding with this, but if I run the animation from this perspective, you can see I'm dropping it down into the domain cube at the same time and then if you look closely what happens to the particles here they're bouncing down and see how they come down and they kind of hit these things and they kind of bounce around like that and that's what gives it the smoke effect like that and you can see how it affects the cube like that and all of that kind of lends uh, to the effect for doing it so a lot of his experimentation when you build this I mean I can't I can't just say, oh yeah, go pick a cube and make this object. You're just going to have to make your own objects and kind of design them 
you know the proper way but this will really help you get started because you can see it kind of helps the smoke give that great little swirling effect well so then at the end of it all when you're actually doing the rendering really what does end up mattering is your camera view because smoke has to be against a dark background so in some cases just by if I was this view tends to work okay but maybe if I had rendered it from this view or way above sometimes it just doesn't work and so you have to be careful about the your background colors and your view in the scene because it's not perfect each and every time but to make work but in general now uh, so then you can see it here and you can see what's going on all right and there's those uh, particles that we was talking about that came out from those octagon shaped objects and you can see there they leave the whole thing well like I said you can see the whole animation uh, separately under one of my playlists called uh, blender animations 2.6 animations I guess something like that all right well I hope that gives you some ideas about how I put this scene together and um, I do a much more extended tutorial but like I said, I'm at the end of a telephone line and my upload speeds here are super slow, almost like modem speed. So this is already a, let me see, a 17 minute tutorial. It's probably going to take several hours just to upload this one video alone. All right. Well, I hope that helps you with your animations and I'll see you in the next video.